How many of you like to play the supportive role? The editor in a creative team? The offensive line on a football team? The healer in a video game? Despite being crucial to the success of whatever they're trying to accomplish, these roles can easily be overlooked or underappreciated. And even the nutrition world is not exempt from this. See, your body has a lot of complex chemical processes that go through an order of operations in order to do really anything. Every bodily function has a multitude of actual physical ingredients elements, compounds, enzymes, hormones, that form the most efficient team you've ever seen. Each of these will trigger another, which will trigger yet another, automatically accounting for inconsistencies, inefficiencies, and having fail-safe after fail-safe in order to keep your body handling as well as possible. The human body is the most impressive and reliable mechanism on the face of the earth, and it's not even close. That is, as long as it's given what it needs. And there's one nutrient in particular that seems to have its metaphorical hand in everything, supporting every bodily process process you could possibly imagine. Let's take a peek behind the curtain, see who's really pulling all the strings, and get back into the true nutrients. Magnesium is undeniably one of the most important minerals in the body, though it gets noticeably less attention than many others. It was first discovered in 1808 by British chemist Humphrey Davy, and it is considered to be an essential nutrient, meaning it is absolutely necessary for optimal health and function, but the body cannot produce it on its own, thus it must be consumed. Magnesium, like many other minerals, is classified as an electrolyte, a particle that carries a charge, in this case a positive charge. The overwhelming majority of magnesium is found intracellularly. About 60% of the body's magnesium is found in the bones, while most of the rest of it is in skeletal muscle and soft tissue. Less than 1% of it is actually found circulating in the blood. Magnesium levels are mainly controlled by the kidneys, as it excretes a noteworthy amount, over 100 milligrams per day. The kidneys do, however, reduce excretion rates when magnesium concentration is low. Interestingly, despite how critical magnesium is, it is not required to be on the standard nutrition label, at least not yet. That is, unless there's extra magnesium magnesium added to a certain product. All in all, magnesium is a fairly standard micronutrient, but it is very unique in what it does. Unlike most other nutrients we've covered thus far, magnesium doesn't have many functions that it itself performs. It is needed for the structure of proteins in certain organelles, specifically the mitochondria, which is, say it with me, the powerhouse of the cell. When it's stored, it's also used for the structure of bones, strengthening calcium phosphate. But pretty much everything else magnesium does is related to it being a cofactor, effectively a helper molecule assisting in or triggering chemical reactions performed by enzymes. Currently, magnesium is known to be a cofactor in over 300 enzyme systems, basically regulating everything. Some of the most important functions that magnesium has a heavy hand in regulating include the following. Protein synthesis from amino acids, including DNA creation, having a stabilizing effect on DNA, stimulating RNA transcription and translation, and kicking off the enzymes that play a role in preventing or removing DNA damage. Muscular contraction and relaxation, acting as a natural calcium blocker to help muscles relax by competing for the same binding spots that calcium uses for stimulation. This effectively prevents muscle overexertion, cramps, or spasms. This also applies to your heart muscles, working in tandem with calcium to maintain a healthy heartbeat. Brain and nervous system preservation acting as a gatekeeper for nerve cells. Magnesium measures strength of triggers, preventing weak signals from unnecessarily stimulating nerve cells. Without magnesium, nerve cells can become overstimulated, potentially resulting in damage or even their death. Realistically, though, I'm not going to sit here and list 300 reasons why you would die without magnesium, so I'm just going to rapid fire off a list of some of the ones that might catch your attention. Proper magnesium consumption contributes to lowered blood pressure and blood sugar levels, improved mood combating anxiety and depression, aid with proper sleep, stabilization of ATP generating reactions effectively having an impact on everything that requires energy, many factors related to immune health, transportation of ions like calcium and potassium across cell membranes, activation of the parathyroid hormone hormone, proper handling of blood sugar and lactate during exercise, and recovery from exercise-related muscle damage, and many, many, many more. Like I said, magnesium has a supporting role in pretty much everything, and if you don't have it in the right amounts, the only question is what part of your body is going to fail you first.
So what exactly is the right amount of magnesium? Well, an average human body contains about 20 to 25 grams of magnesium. The standard recommended daily intake for magnesium is 400 milligrams for men and 310 for women. This is obviously higher when pregnant and in general slightly goes up with age. Magnesium is absorbed at a roughly 30 to 40 percent rate, mainly in the small intestine. The absorption rate is shown to fairly increase when protein and vitamin D are sufficient, and it's shown to be less efficient when in the presence of certain anti nutrients like phytate. The estimations for how much of the population is magnesium deficient varies from roughly 15 to 30 percent. Not as much as certain other nutrients we've covered in the past, but still an alarming amount given how much magnesium impacts. Most of the time, insufficient magnesium is due to a lack of it in the diet, but of course, other, more rare medical conditions can be the cause. Now, insufficient magnesium is called hypomagnesemia, and it may be asymptomatic for a little while. However, hypomagnesemia has the potential to contribute to all sorts of of bad things, the most noteworthy being the usual nausea, fatigue, and loss of appetite, anxiety, depression, migraines, overstimulation of senses, muscle cramps, high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, heart disease, chronic inflammation, osteoporosis, etc. Again, basically every chemical function in the body is reliant on magnesium for support. Now on the other end, too much magnesium is called hypermagnesemia. It's exceptionally rare and almost never a nutritional issue, but more of a medical one. Same as you usual, if you have any concerns, again I say go get your blood mineral levels measured and go from there. Alright, last stretch, let's talk about good sources of magnesium. Now the first thing I want to mention is minerals in water. Drinking water on average contains about 10 milligrams per liter of magnesium. I also forgot to mention in my last video that this is the case with calcium as well, with drinking water containing on average 20 milligrams per liter of calcium. Now on to the food sources. You can find trace amounts of magnesium in pretty much every food out there, but there are some food groups and individual foods that are much better sources. When it comes to plant foods, nuts and seeds are the most magnesium dense. Leafy green vegetables are a good low calorie source and beans and unprocessed grains also contain a noteworthy amount. Special mention to true dark chocolate as well for its surprisingly great magnesium contribution. Now looking at animal foods, magnesium is not quite as dense or accessible but there's still a variety of options. Similar to many other micronutrients, the best sources come from the sea, most notably fatty fish, crustaceans, and mollusks like cuttlefish and octopus. Land meats on the other hand are a fine source, but you'd be hard-pressed to consume enough exclusively from them. Magnesium is not the most accessible mineral, but it is far from the least. If you ever find yourself struggling to get enough, again I encourage you to go test your blood mineral levels first, but keep in mind that magnesium supplements are a thing. They're actually one of the most commonly used micro supplements and are shown to be very safe in recommended amounts. When we start getting this deep, nutrition conceptually starts getting more complicated. While a better understanding of how food and nutrients affects your body is not going to hurt you, there is definitely a threshold that an average person should know. Most bodies can take care of themselves when given what they need. And trust me when I tell you that they need this one. For the average person, just embrace eating with intent. Do your best to find the balance between function, nutrient density, pleasure, and consistency, and don't be afraid to ask questions. Now if you enjoyed the video, or at the very least learned a little something, Thing, I encourage you to subscribe as I've got plenty more of these on the way. Go ahead and let me know down in the comments what other nutrients you think deserve an entire in-depth breakdown video like this. And remember that all I ask is that you do your own research and advocate for your body. You only get the one.